Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, cue that wind effect. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> bring it on in. Bring it on in. Everybody bring it on in. Bring it on in. Hey, what a, hey, what a day. Hey, what is it? What a time to be alive. Guys, we got some good information. Uh, if you haven't heard, like I said, we got some sweet news to cover at the end of this video with our AMC saga. Like I said, guys, the short percentage, the shares, the way that it's side trading will all give me indication that this thing just ain't all in their favor and as we know those letters and everything that were being sent did make a difference like i said we're gonna cover it at the end of the video here but uh, i just wanted to pull this video up with um fox business was basically reporting again on the overall sentiment of the market if it seems like amt side shows, you got to realize the entire market is trading sideways everybody's depending on the news that's about to break out this week like i said well, let's just cover the video hey, and we'll get, get at the end of baby hey hey y'all Welcome in. Let's get down to get it. Get right to the floor show. We're joined by traders Kenny Polcari and John Corpina live from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Kenny, the Fed's locked down in its cone of silence ahead of the May 3rd meeting now. But is it earnings or Friday's personal consumption numbers that you think will make the difference between a moving market or one that's on the edge of its seat? Uh, listen, I got to tell you, I do think it's both because I think we're going to get a lot of excitement coming out of the earnings this week. It's a big, big week. We're going to hit those big tech earnings. I actually suspect that the, you could see an upside surprise in some of those numbers. But then Friday, like you said, we're going to get the Fed's favorite inflation gauge, and that's going to be the tell-all about where the Fed is going in May and then possibly June and July. So there's a lot ahead. This is not the week to fall asleep at all. Yeah, I know that, yeah. but... Uh John Corpina, <laughs> when you look at the market action, you've got to believe that it's not just the PCE. We can put up the economic calendar totally different from the earnings calendar. And there are a huge number of important pieces of data that are coming out, not just the home sales numbers and things like that. But we're getting the case Shiller home price index, not to mm -hmm. mention to me. I'm watching the March durable goods. Oh, this bad boy. So everybody can see what's coming. Y'all this week is not only you know obviously tomorrow we have our um teller teller uh, cast we're going to hear kind of like the line of the schedule of what's going to go on with our case but the news is breaking out as far as gdp how the economy is going what's going on with inflation how the consumer reports are dealing all of this is about to shift this market this market right this week alone is going to be one of those weeks that determines how multiple aspects of our financial journey go as far as the market as a whole as well as our certain plays and short plays etc you know the big ticket in items there. that last from three to five years are people really spending or are they going to either repair their washing machines or cars instead of trying to get new ones Repairing. and then jobless claims first quarter gdp the first read on that comes thursday is there any one of these in particular where you feel that's more important than what a First Republic reports after the bell, for example. Hey, Liz, you know, I, I love to disagree with Kenny, but I have to be on the same side oh. uh, of him on this Darn. one here. It's a combination <laughs> of everything, right? Look at the market activity today. Really benign, not a lot going on, just showing us that everyone's sitting back and waiting for what's to come. You put this all together, earnings, the economic calendar that we have, all the chatter that we talk about the Fed, this is all going to lead us up to what the Fed does next week. We obviously wait for this date on our calendar, as we've seen before in the past, and how the market activity relates to it. And it seems like we're getting towards the end of the tunnel here. The Fed has the market right where they want. The Fed loves when the market is like this, where it's teetering on the Fed's decisions. This is where they love to be. This allows them to have that power. And right now, that is literally the overarching sentiment is that everything is just depending on what's occurring next month. And the craziest part is, there's more interest rates coming. There's more interest rate hikes coming. So like, as far as interest rate hikes are concerned, this is a very important meeting. The Fed has always said they're going to remain data dependent. This is going to well, shock the market. Week. They're going to get tons, a third of the S&P's report this Fed rate week, the Fed and all that other rate. economic data that's going to add into that. Rate they are going to have exactly what they need. And to, Kenny's, to, to, to go along Kenny's lines, they're going to have all the ingredients that they need for their recipe to come out with their product on, uh, on next week. And I think we're going to see a quick raise, and then that's going to be the end of it. Well, okay, if you're talking about recipes and you're talking about inflation. You said that about the last one. This morning, and they did pretty well because they are able to have pricing power. Quick raise Again, and then hold. When you have pricing power, that means inflation is still hanging around. Stock had been positive in the beginning, Kenny. It has dipped into negative territory just by about a half a percent. But won't the Fed look at something like Coca-Cola and say, 
say, you know what, this confirms our fears that companies are able well, to continue hiking prices and so inflation remains sticky. Yeah. Well, it's so, and that go exactly. And Good that question. Goes to your point hey. About are we really, I was in the camp that we're going to get May and then a pause, but I'm starting to waver on that a little bit. Okay, exactly Kenny is real with it. Is that could they say May and then June and then a pause, right? But look, Coca-Cola <laughs> also did say that hey, there one were month supply and then pause. prices that were coming down. He Guys, we have not figured out what's going on as far as how, how bad inflation is, how to count it right now, because of course we're still in the massive uh, uh, shift what's going on with our, pol our political uh, geoframe as far as the countries, Russia, all this stuff, the oil, the dollar, the value of the dollar, all that is going on right now. You can't put a stop to something while the curb of the value of money is dropping. The cost of things are being raised by companies by themselves. And you're trying to, and then of course we have all this other stuff going on with uh, uh, ch uh, Chinese gold yarn trying to be the standard of oil and the battle right now and the pressure on the American dollar. That you think there's going to be a way to just stop this now? You go have to, hey, we said May, then June, then a pause. Or how about May, then June, then July, then a pause? Hey, this is going to, guys, it's going to raise up there. We're just in the middle of this. I, I, I personally believe that we're just now coming to the front arc of what truly should have been explored. Like I said, the economy's six months behind. Economy moves six months behind whatever uh, dictations happen in, in, in the markets. So if, you think, if it's getting it, it, like this, what's going to come is only getting worse for the next six months. It's behind six months. Jeez. Was seeing some relief in the cost of goods, yet not enough. Right. So that allowed him to continue to have that pricing pressure. So I think that was a little, you know, it was kind of a mixed message coming out of Coke. I thought it was actually a positive message, but look what they've done. They took the stock up and now they're just taking a little bit of profit out of it. But yes, to your point, that's going to be the, the ongoing narrative that the Fed's going to have to listen to. Well, John, forget the fact that sugar, raw sugar futures are, are also spiking pretty dramatically. <laughs> uh, it, go back to the they banks. Sell everything. We got Credit Suisse numbers. And there was some scary but stuff Max in there, price. obviously, before it had to be rescued by UBS. We're waiting on First Republic numbers after the bell. Why do you think, as a trader, this stock is popping 8% at the moment for First Republic? I, I mean, I think that are, are investors getting a little ahead of their skis? Retail? Yeah, Liz, I think we know what we know, and I think that's the good news that's there. The dust has settled in this, right? You and I spoke about this. When we were going through the regional bank issues that were there, it was the contagion effect. What's going to happen next? Is this going to roll into other regional banks? It seems like it was contained to in, in that certain area, that certain spectrum, and it hasn't gone anywhere further. And I think First Republic clearly uh, felt the impact of that, but they were able to stabilize, and when we see the way the stock has been trading recently. So once again, we know, 83 we know that's the good news they that's about here. We good. know that the the outflow we is almost going to be lost painful, the whole thing. but how painful will it be? How substantial it's going to be? I don't think it's irrelevant. We know it's going to be there. So I think what investors are looking at is get this earnings report out, digest this negative news that's probably going to be attached to it, and then the stock will start to rebound from there. So as you said, yes, they are getting ahead of this. Well, let, let's talk about the Fed again, because <laughs> it, it, you can get ahead of anything that you want, but the Fed... We're already ahead of because we know what they're going to do, Kenny, don't we? I right. mean, we're looking at Fed right. funds futures now, something like a 90 percent odds probability that we will see a 25 basis point hike. Mar May 3rd, right. that's where we are right now. Now, it, actually, we updated it, 91.4 percent. May 3rd. Probability. Mark that May 3rd. Right. Okay, so, so everybody should right. stop crying and, and accept it's getting, it. It's right? getting the intense. Of grief. Right. But then June. <laughs> The June Fed funds yes. futures indicate more of a pause, more than 65% odds of a pause there. Kenny's like. And now it's 67.9%, <laughs> and even a 26% chance of a quarter basis point hike. What, what do you think? I mean, uh, the, the Fed is not bluffing, are they? Kenny. No, no, the Fed is not. No, no, I don't think the Fed's bluffing at all. And, you know, like I said, I started to they don't have an option on the fence a little bit, thinking that we're going to get two more rate hikes, a May and a June. I was very much in the camp that was going to be May and then stop and get us to five, five and a quarter in the terminal rate. But in fact, if they go in June again, that'll get us to five and a quarter, five and a half, which is kind of more where we're hearing some of the most recent Fed uh, FOMC member commentary, right? right? Loretta Mester, Jimmy Bullard, Neil Kashkari, all pushing for 
for a little bit higher. So uh, we may be in that camp. And by the way, the CTA just reported. I would not want to be a short bet, seller. Right. A one point two nine million contract bet mm -hmm. that the, the Fed is going to continue to raise rates uh, into June and possibly July. And that means that that's, true. That. that's a bet that's going to pay off because Treasury prices will will decline. It's a short bet. So they're betting that Treasury prices will decline and because yields will go up because the Fed continues to raise. We need to give that bet a name. Is that the T-bill whale? What, what should we call that? That is, <laughs> that is quite a, a whale of a train. I put it in my note. I put it in my note this morning. Uh, yes, and, and I, I wake up to that note every morning because <laughs> that's my life, John. Um, John <laughs> Kenny, great to see you. John, no more agreeing, you, agreeing with Kenny Polcari, okay? We can't have that on this show. <laughs> great to see you both. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> you bet. See you. All right, all right, all right. People, people, let's get down to business with our sweet, sweet play, guys. So uh, double tapping in here. Uh, guys, the price move today was, as usual, just garbaggio. It was, you know, this is just n unrealistic, uh, a massive ladder attacking as the play does the same thing. Uh, uh, Pre-market, she pops out of there. What do they do? Took everything they had uh, 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 scapulated over the last weekend and tried to smolder her down. She's trying to break out. And what happens? Look at this movement. Look at this movement. Look at this movement. Jesus. Call it a sweet and, and, and it looks like it's forming something that looks like a head and shoulders. But like I said, I'm not even really going off of any patterns because again, it has nothing to do with any just technical play. This was just the simple fact of that we got some excellent news. Uh guys, retail is finally stepping into its place. And I told y'all, and I always comment, was retail figure out how big we are and how much power we have. You can move markets. You can change things. We can move stocks. That's so, so I said. After we get our money out of this AMC play, we're going to keep making more plays, more plays, more plays. That's what I'm just trying to let you know. We have the power. A retail is a segment that cannot be stopped now. There's too many. It's too much money. We, uh, it's too much aggression. Too, uh, uh, um, we get psyched out in a play. Like, But nonetheless, uh, um. A special ma uh, uh, master has been um, appointed by Judge Zern on the behalf of retail due to the fact that all the letters and emails and all the petitions that retail sent, which I knew, I said, she's seeing all those. I put that in the last video. I said, there's, she's no, there, all that stuff is getting to her. And this lady doesn't seem like she's paid off. And it's seeming like this. And like I said, it was a clip that was circulating around where Adam Aaron even told, said that Zern said she wanted to do the right way. Guys, this not only I don't think it's going to turn in favor of Adamaran, but also I think there's a way longer duration. I think that then because a lot of people are feeling like, uh, uh, oh, next next month the play's over, guys. The, the the play ain't over till this conversion happens, and that has happened after a hearing. This is not the hearing that's coming up. This the 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 okay the settlement happens. That could be four months from now. It's no, they can't do this for four months. They're, 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 they're exhausted. More or less, I played that clip to show that it's only getting more pressure coming. We're going over a 6% interest rate. There ain't no stop on no hub on that. But guys, double tap in here. And, and I think the um, lady's name is Corrine Amato, which is another lady. Good. Hey, get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Hey, hey Miss Zern, if you get this, baby, hey, listen. We love you now. I swear to God. Hey, listen. All right, but coming in, guys. Uh, uh, 40,000 measly shares at 200%. And guys, this just populated up. It was just at 0% when I had it up there before I refreshed. And all of this occurred. They absorbed this. They took this many shares and, it, and burned all those down where they only have 40,000 left. 40,000 shares available on loan at 200% uh, 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 short. Now, catch this. Funny how, oh, it's not showing 1,000% cost of borrow, right? But it's funny how here we are. 26.89% still, 10.47 days covered. I'm actually going to show you some uh, uh, some other numbers that I'm seeing, which are pretty crazy. Let me pull this up over here. Where did I have that at? And I want to show you, I got the, the official document as well of the appointing of the master, just so you can see the wording. I want y'all to catch the wording, all right? Well, let's see here. All right, guys, this is the Ortex, da uh, Ortex data. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I hope this is the one where I've got... Uh, they, I had I had AMC up here, but I've seen it. I thought, hold on, see. Where's my AMC? 
Where's my AMC? Hold up. Ah. Oh. Well, never mind, guys. I, I thought that I saw one that was uh, AMC sitting up here where it was at 15 days ago. But this is GME. Hey, GameStop. GameStop has actually evolved into another type of play now. It's not as much a, a meme stock as it is. They're actually doing a company where they're building a business model. But, hey, that's always good news for them to have their 15 days covered. So we're still, we're, we're, we'll stick with what, what Fintel is showing us now because that other might have been correlated with GameStop. But still, nonetheless, 10.47 days to cover on it. Short interest is not dropping, even though they're trying to show that um, cost to borrow isn't at 1000 Cost to borrow should be at a at, 500,000 at this point. The amount of synthetics that's sitting up there. But I want to tap this in. Um, AMC has its earnings reports May 5th. Don't forget, May 3rd is going to be when the Fed rate meeting is, where they're going to drop a hike. So, like I said, the volatility that's not only this week, but next week is, is market shaking. And you got shorts in here that are about to have to put in. They're having to dump in more cash to hold this position where they might be screwed. Let me tap in and show you what I mean. This is the official letter of the document, right? Court of the Chancery of State of Delaware, right? Morgan T. Zern. Yes, sir. All right, look down here. It's just the wording. In this action, three stockholders of AMC Entertainment Holdings brought claims against AMC directors on behalf of a punitive class to enjoin the voting and consummation of certain proposals. Uh, and guys, mind you, this is Judge T. Zern writing this including a 10 for one reverse stock split and the conversion of all AMC preferred equity units, apes into the common stock. Many other proposed stockholders have docketed letters with, and they, this is the document, this is many of the other stockholders, this is literally her saying, hey, she's gotten the, the letter, she's getting the letter. Uh, uh, docketed, uh, what did I say? Docket letters with the court expressing a range of views on the proposal, the claims, their membership, class and other alleged wrongdoings by amc fiduciary and other actors in the stock market some stockholders have moved it to intervene as parties All right now i just want y'all to tap in and of course y'all come through i'm gonna actually put the link of this as well so y'all can come see this uh and you can kind of read over doc come read over this guys this is to let you i feel like this is important for if you're invested in this uh stock to read over this so you can understand hey this lady is speaking Real facts. She's calling how it is. We've got a a, a, a a master appointed to be on the behalf of retail just to speak on our half because she's already admitting, hey, that's wrong doing here. Guys, this is stone cold. This is getting wicked, which explains that price action where they had to come and try to die bomb that thing just for the end where it started. Guys, this is mental warfare. You got to hold yourself in check on this, guys. But like I said, guys, hold it down. Hey, I'm, I'm feeling good about going into these next couple weeks guys we're going into june which hey this is how it all started realistically up under these tentative type of things where you have liquidity issues you have the uh retail uh uh, uh holding a, a vast amount of shares there's a vast amount of synthetics they're running into an implosion where they're about to be crunched with more interest rates. It's going to cost more. And then the whole scheme of this conversion, if this doesn't happen, there is no escape. That would be, I mean, the devastation of short sellers on this that have come this deep. They were looking for this conversion. This was a, a setup play. This is orchestrated. For this key factor right here not to happen, that's a bombshell, guys. Hey, guys, we're on a tip of something nasty right here, guys. Hey, listen, much love to y'all. Hey, I love all the support, baby, y'all. Hey, hey, if you haven't already, make sure you like, subscribe. Hey, we're trying to build this thing up. We've got better content coming. We're going to get a better set, all that great stuff. But like I said, this is just the beginning. Like I said, we're just uh, 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 bringing our part to retail. And I'm so glad that y'all are finding it enjoyable and informative, guys. But like I said, guys, we got some money on the way in, baby. Y'all hold it down. Keep your mentals in check, like I said in the video uh, uh, from the weekend. Prepare for a lot of news. This week alone just off of the earnings report and everything and the market is going to be racket and wild and volatile more or less what's going on with short sellers and, and if you're if you're in a, a retail stock hey y'all hold it down much love y'all babies yes sir